In addition to using rail clone color to randomize textures, you can also pick solid colors from a gradient or use them to tint bitmaps using one of five transfer modes. Let's use the floor tiles in this kitchen as an example. We're already randomizing between five off-white textures, but now we'll add some additional tonal variation too. Turn on the tint map settings. The strength of this effect is controlled using a random value that determines how much the tint will mix with the bitmaps. A random percentage is selected between the minimum and the maximum value, or you can set both values to 100% to force the full effect to be applied. To design the gradient, you just set the colors using two swatches, one to set the start of the gradient and one to set the end. Next, you can choose one of five blending modes. Normal mode, which displays the tint color without any blending. Additive, in which the RGB value of the tint color is added to the RGB value of each pixel on the map. Average, which adds the tint color to the map color and then divides it by two. And finally, multiply, where the map color is multiplied by the tint color. Tints less than pure white will darken the map, as we'll see in this example in just a second. The final setting, the slider, has no effect in Rail Clone, but it's included because Rail Clone Color will work with future versions of Forest Pack. In Forest Color, this same setting enables you to choose between randomizing per mesh element at one end or per instance at the other. And really, that's it. Tinting by color is a fast and easy way to add a lot of variation with a minimum amount of effort and without needing to add or change anything in your Rail Clone graph.